me read from uh, Matthew chapter 24. I will begin from verse 1. And I will read a few. And then next uh, time on Monday next week, we shall continue from wherever we will stop. Because chapter 24 is about eschatology, it's about end times. It, it, it is Jesus giving the signs of the times and telling us what we shall go through before Christ returns again. And so let me read uh, maybe uh, verse 1 to 7. And it says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him uh, for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said to them, See you not all these things? Verily I say to you, there shall, there shall not be left any one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, saying, uh, uh, the disciples came to him saying, uh, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when these things uh, will be and what shall be the signs of your coming and the end of the world. Verse 4, and Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceive you, for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you uh, you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places, that is up to verse 7. And there are many other things we shall look at. Maybe we shall be referred back to some of them. So let us leave the book still open. Let me say this, uh, uh, that uh, one of the major signs is already happening as we see. That many are deceiving even the very elect if it were possible to leave the faith and go back to the world. Many are misleading those who have not received Christ to even get further away from him, that they may not know the truth, because it is the truth that sets uh, 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 people free. That's why the enemy has raised his servants who can come and deceive. And uh, um, many have already even claimed to be Jesus Christ. And we know even in uh, the land of Kenya, there was a church that brought uh, a, a man uh, uh, with light skin and long hair and said it was Christ Jesus who had visited the church and uh, 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 the members were deceived into worshipping him and believing that it was Jesus Christ uh, and so we should not be marveled, we should not be startled, we should not be mesmerized, we should not be shocked to see these things happening. And uh, there are people who are even claiming uh, are, are to be greater than they are right now. And I want to say that uh, very soon, some of these people we know that are claiming to be different things, Moses, Elijah, and other uh, mighty men, uh, will soon say they are Christ Jesus. Already some have said that they are the ones who hold the keys to heaven. And only they, not Christ, they can allow people to enter uh, into heaven and I want to say this, that is not true, and that is just one way of deceiving the elect, and I want to tell us to be very careful. The Bible says that uh, Jesus telling the disciples, take heed that no one deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. They shall deceive many, not few. You know, Jesus said that the narrow is the path that leads to life and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And in the narrow path, very few uh, may uh, be able to see it. And uh, the wider one has majority of the people following. And uh, there is a way that seemeth right in the eyes of man, but the end thereof is destruction. And this broad way looks like the right way. It looks like where the majority are, and we pretend to be people of democracy so that we want to be with the majority. I had one time one person say, they don't mind going to hell if all the good musicians we know today 
will be there because they believe uh, they will be entertained. But I can tell you, the Bible is clear that there will be no entertainment. There will be uh, gnashing of teeth, grinding of teeth, and weeping day and night because of the kind of torture they shall be going through in that place because it burns with sulfur. And I want to tell you this, not to scare you, but to know there is punishment at the end of every road that you take or here on earth and every action that you do. And I want to say this, if we here on earth have prisons where we take the criminals and bind them there and lock them there, there must be a place where the spiritual criminals who disobey God, disobey the commandments of God will be sent to. And together with the devil, uh, the antichrist and the false prophet. So we better take heed. Hallelujah. I will continue to talk about that. That is aside from the uh, notes. And now and that was from the scriptures. And I can already say that uh, we have heard wars and rumors of wars. And we have seen nation rise against one nation. And kingdom against one kingdom. We have seen famine and pestilence and earthquakes uh, in diverse places all over the world. And those are the kinds of news we are used to. The moment you open your TV, the news you read is there is a volcano that has blown up. There is an uh, earthquake that has shaken uh, our, our nation, a city, and killed very many people. We have heard uh, of pestilences uh, like locusts, even here in Kenya, famines that have killed very many people because of lack of food, droughts and uh, sicknesses and diseases that have never been known before have come up and those are some of the signs Jesus said those are telltale signs of his coming. So what is going to happen according to the end time prophecies? The Bible has a lot to say about end times. That is one thing and uh, uh, there are several books you can read. Uh, Ezekiel has talked about end times. Daniel has talked about end times. Even uh, uh, Isaiah has mentioned the day of the Lord and the judgment. And most of the minor prophets always refer to the day of the Lord and the day of judgment. And then you can come to the New Testament. And Jesus himself, even from the gospel, talked about the end times. And then we have many uh, uh, other apostles who picked up and talked about it. We know Paul has talked about uh, specifically about end times and even how the dead will, will, will come back to life uh, and uh, uh, the ones remaining will be changed. And we know he has talked about that. And Peter picked up and then First John, uh, or Second John, Third John, uh, Jude, and then Revelation. All these places have talked about the end times. And uh, I, 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 I want to say the Bible is truly full of the stories about end times and what will happen, the events that will happen and take, uh, and take place. Uh, 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 and we are already seeing some of them already taking place. Uh, nearly every book of the Bible contains prophecy regarding the end times. Taking all of these prophecies and organizing them can be very difficult because it is not entire books that talk about the end times except revelation that begins from church and then towards uh, 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 the persecution the, the the rapture the the marriage supper of the lamb uh, the, ju the, 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 the 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 new heavens the new earth the judgment and the uh, eternity uh, that is one book that has really concentrated on that but many other books have bits and pieces that we can pick that direct us and tell us how things will be, uh, even in that time. But organizing them is not an easy thing because it is a very wide topic, vastly mentioned in almost every book of the Bible, from Genesis to the very end of uh, uh, Revelation. Following is a very brief summary of what the Bible declares will happen in the end time. Christ will remove all born-again believers from the earth in an event known as rapture. And I want to say that the word rapture 
is not mentioned in the Bible, but it means uh, uh, he will take away the believers, those who believe in him. And uh, uh, one of the books you can read that will give you a clear picture of how it shall happen, uh, and the only two that mention it very well, the rapture, is First Thessalonians chapter 4. If you begin from verse 13 to verse 18, it tells you clearly how that event will be. And then there is First Corinthians 15, verse 51 to 54. Uh, it also talks about uh, uh, rapture. At the judgment seat of Christ, these believers will be rewarded for the good works and faithful service during their time on earth. Or will lose rewards, but not eternal life. And the Bible clearly talks about it, and I will tell you where to look at. And then you can see that their work will be judged with fire. And if your work was uh, made of gold, it shall be purified to shine even more, silver the same. And then there is precious stones, and then there is stone, and then there is metals, and then there is wood, then there is hay. And those will be banned and they will be destroyed. But the people will be saved as if they went through fire. And I always tell people, it's like uh, passing a chicken through fire. The feathers will burn, but they will make it to heaven. Hallelujah. It shall be, it shall be an embarrassment if you enter heaven and you have nothing to show for the works because it has already been judged and banned. Because it was not uh, made with precious stones. Hallelujah. Uh, for lack of service, they, 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 they will not lose their eternal life, but they, are, they will lose their rewards that they were supposed to receive for lack of service and obedience. And you can ask yourself what service and obedience are you supposed to be doing right now. You can read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11 to 15. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. Uh, and that will show you how we shall all be judged. You see, the Bible says judgment will begin in the house of the Lord. They will not be judged to know whether they will go to uh, uh, everlasting life or hell or the lake of fire, uh, but it is their work that will be judged. Why did they serve the Lord with obedience? Did they serve the Lord with faithfulness? Did they serve the Lord by taking care of other people? because that is one of the major ways you can serve the Lord. And when we look at uh, chapter 25, during this process of studying uh, end times, then we shall see how Christ will judge people for not taking care of the least ones. Uh, and, and that is very important. So there'll be rapture and there'll be judgment. Judgment of believers is on their works and faithfulness and their service and for non-believers it will be whether they received Christ or not and then the lake of fire. Uh, um, the second thing that we can look at, is, uh, maybe the third, uh, because we have said rapture and we have said judgment, is the Antichrist and Revelation calls the Antichrist the beast. And the first time we see him appearing in the book of Revelation is chapter 13. He comes out of the sea, and that is um, uh, 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 apocalyptic kind of language. It doesn't mean he came from the waters. Uh, we need to understand that water, big bodies of water, mean multitudes of people. So it means a beast came out of the peoples of the earth, and we know for sure uh, when we read, and we shall we shall do that very uh, comprehensively and carefully, that uh, the beast will come out of a nation, will have a, an origin, and it is most likely, and I don't want, I'm saying most likely because I don't want to discuss that subject right here, will come from Middle East and especially from the nation of Israel. So he will be, because it will be very hard for someone to claim to be Christ, and then they're not Jews, because everyone knows that Christ came through the Jews, and it doesn't mean the Jews are uh, 
were a special person in that way that Christ came from there but God chose that nation to work with. They are just human beings like every other person and they need salvation from Christ Jesus just like every other person uh, uh, and they can only enter heaven through Christ just like any other person. But he chose that nation and so even the Antichrist will have to have qualities that can cause people to mistake him for Christ. That's what I'm saying. He will come from Middle East and the uh, nation of Israel. And the Antichrist or the beast will come into power and will sign a covenant with Israel for seven years. And that is found in Daniel chapter 9 and verse 27 is also found in Revelation. And I'm not going to quote the Revelation one because we are going to look at that uh, period of time very carefully. This seven years period of time is known as the tribulation and these seven years of time is divided into two, three and a half years. The first uh, three and a half years is called tribulation and the last three and a half years is called the great tribulation. Now, the seven years put together are just called uh, tribulation. During the, uh, the tribulation, there will be ter uh, terrible wars, as we have read in the book of Matthews. Uh, terrible wars, farming, plagues, and natural disasters. So in that period that we are coming towards, and it shall be marked by these things beginning to happen, which we are already seeing happening. There will be things like uh, earthquakes, there will be floods, there will be famines, there will be pestilence, uh, there will be pandemics, uh, there will be uh, tsunamis, there will be problem on the land, problem in the air, problem in the sea. Uh, that's how it shall be. And Jesus Christ, as we shall continue to read in Matthew 24, he say, says this, that that time will be so much suffering like it has never been seen before or neither shall it ever be seen. I can tell you those will not be easy times but we shall look at how rapture happens. Do Christians go through the whole tribulation? Do they suffer with everybody else? Uh, uh, or they are rescued by Christ before, in the midst or after? Uh, we shall look into that. Uh, but I always tell people whether rapture happens in the beginning, in the middle, or the, in the end, the most important thing is to make it to eternal life. It's not when you will be delivered, it's making it at the end. That's why the book of Revelation is full of this statement. Whoever will stand until the end, that shall be given a crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. That is one statement that is in chapter 1, 2, 3, very many times over. And then it is repeated several other times in other passages. So we need to, to think about that. God will be pouring out his wrath against sin, evil, and wickedness. You see, we always ask, why does God allow evil? Why does God allow sin? Why does God allow people to suffer? This will be time for God to judge sin, evil, wickedness, and all this suffering. That's when God will pour his wrath upon all those. The tribulation will include the appearing of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and we know what they did. Uh, and we shall look at that because I will want us to, by the time we are ending this uh, series, to look at the book of Revelation closely to understand what it talks about. I will try to summarize the whole book into a short lesson and we can look at it and understand what Revelation is talking about. So the four horsemen of Apocalypse, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls of judgment. And we know there are also seven angels and things of that nature. But we shall look at them when we are studying the book of Revelation to understand what these seven, uh, four horsemen, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls of judgment, and what they mean in our lives today. 
Hallelujah. I thank God that we are saved already for those who are saved. If you are not saved, please, you better contact me and we can work out a way for you to know what salvation is and to be uh, saved and to choose salvation for the glory and honor of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. About halfway through the seven years, the Antichrist will break the peace covenant with Israel and make war against it. And the Bible is clear that there shall be a war called Armageddon. And in the valley of Armageddon, the Bible tells us that so many people will die that blood will reach a man's waist whilst he sits on a horse. That is a lot of blood, meaning very many people will die in that. This is what we can call the Third World War. And I tell you, it's not an easy time. You can imagine the world with its advancement coming to make war against Israel. They have nuclear weapons. They have uh, atomic bombs. They have uh, uh, weapons of mass uh, destruction. They have uh, poisonous gas. They have uh, uh, microwave uh, 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 emissions and radiations that they can release to create fear, to alter uh, people's bodies and uh, uh, maybe even melt them. You see, the, the things you see in the movies are things that have been captured in the spiritual realm and they come and give us a snippet of what may happen. You know all those movies about uh, uh, the en end of the world uh, 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 funny uh, 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 bodies and aliens and uh, human beings and of, of different nature uh, all those things I can tell you for sure they catch them from the uh, spirit realm and create movies some of the things they call aliens will be demons and spirits and we better expect that things will not be the same on earth but we shall look at how God encourages his church, the body. The Antichrist will commit the abomination of desolation and set up an image of himself to be worshipped in the Jerusalem temple. Now, right now, currently, there is no temple in Jerusalem where uh, we call the, 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 the Temple Mount, the mountain uh, or the hill where Solomon built the first temple which was destroyed and the second temple was built and it was also destroyed and the second temple is what Jesus was talking about saying there will be no stone left sitting on another one and that temple was destroyed in 70 AD the first temple was destroyed when Daniel Ezekiel in the times of Jeremiah were taken captives by Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. The city of Jerusalem was burned, even the walls were broken, and the second temple was built by Zerubbabel during the times of Nehemiah. When Nehemiah went and built uh, uh, the walls, then a second group of Jews came back to rebuild the temple led by Zerubbabel. And when you read the book of uh, Zechariah uh, chapter 4, it talks to Zerubbabel directly, telling him uh, what is this mountain that stands before Zerubbabel. And it is where we get the scripture, it's not by power, it's not by might, it is by my spirit, says the Lord. Those words were being spoken to Zerubbabel to go and rebuild the temple, that he should not fear anybody who may come against him and anyone who may resist him and anyone who may want to stop and curtail the work of the temple. And we know that he built the temple. And when Jesus was born, that is the temple he found. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when uh, 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 the temple was destroyed the first time, that's where the most of the prophecies about the, the latter temple uh, saying it will be more glorious. That's where those uh, prophecies came in uh, Habakkuk, in Haggai. They prophesied about the temple and how uh, 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 it was glorious before. Who has seen the glory of the temple in the past? Yet there shall be greater glory in the latter temple than even in the first. 
and the second temple uh, was there until Jesus prophesied that it would be destroyed and it was destroyed in AD 70 when Jerusalem was attacked again and that is after uh, the days of Pentecost, the uh, years of the apostles, then there was another attack. And the temple was destroyed and the nation of Israel was dispersed all over the world. And they only returned back to that holy land in 1948, May of 1948. But they were not able to rebuild the temple because where the temple is, is where the dome, the, the mosque called the dome, is built currently, sitting on the very uh, uh, mount where the temple was. So there's no temple, but a third temple will be built when the Antichrist appears. Now, it is said that uh, there is technology currently uh, that the temple can be built within six weeks six months so things can happen very fast uh, a turn of event can happen very quickly and we find ourselves having a temple sitting on that place meaning that Antichrist is ready to be uh, revealed now the bible tells us in the book of daniel chapter 9 verse 27 that the antichrist will commit the abomination of desolation and set up an image of himself to be worshipped in the temple and he will stop the evening sacrifice, which was sacrificed at 3 p.m. in the afternoon when people went to pray and to sacrifice. He will stop that sacrifice. And it is recorded in Revelation, but I'm not quoting the Revelation a lot because I want us to take the book of Revelation by itself and go through it in one of the lessons of the end times so that we can see what it says. Then second uh, Thessalonians 2, 3 to 10 also talks about it. Paul quoting what was said, which um, uh, Jerusalem temple, which will have been rebuilt. The second half of the tribulation is known as the great tribulation. And that is mentioned in Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. And the end, uh, the time of Jacob's trouble is called that same period is called the time of jacob's trouble and it is mentioned in jeremiah 30 and verse 7 and that is the third thing that will happen at the end of the seven years of tribulation the antichrist uh, the antichrist will launch a final attack uh, on jerusalem culminating in the battle of Armageddon, Jesus Christ will return together with the hosts of heaven and his saints to come and deliver Israel and the world uh, uh, to destroy the Antichrist and his armies. At this time is when Jesus will defeat the Antichrist and his armies and the Antichrist will be thrown into the lake of fire together with the false prophet. Now, the false prophet stands uh, as the one world leader of the religious body. So there will be one world government and there will be one world religion because this is what the Antichrist will want. And all this will be done during the first three years of the seven years where he makes a peace covenant with Israel. So he will tell people, most of our battles are because we have different governments ruled by different people who don't agree with each other. So let us form one government and have one world leader. And that will be the Antichrist. Then he'll say, the second uh, reason why many battles are fought is because of our diverse faith different faiths and therefore he will tell them for us to avoid these things that we disagree on in terms of faith let us have one world church and he will appoint one leader to be the head of the one world church 
And that is what we are calling the false prophet. Why is he called the false prophet? Because he is the one who will be advising the Antichrist on spiritual matters. And so he will say, God has said, when God has not said. He will say, God says everybody must worship this way, when God has not said so. Because when the Antichrist puts that image in the temple, the false prophet will tell him to force the whole world to worship uh, that image. And it says in Revelation that he will give power to that image, that it shall be able to utter blasphemy against God. The, I, the, the, the image will talk. The image will perform signs and wonders because it shall be given power. It means the Antichrist will have certain powers. And these powers will be given by the devil uh, for him to perform these things. Uh, 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 we know that God is the ultimate power. God cannot compete with anything or anyone. Uh, he's the ultimate power. But we cannot deny that Satan having been an angel, and not just an angel, but a leading angel. He's called the prince. He is called uh, 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 the angel who covered the throne, meaning he was the one who protected the throne of God. And he is the one who led the worship of heaven. He was not a small angel. And you know, the gifts of God are without repentance. And that's why the devil still terrorizes the world because the intelligence and the powers he had were never taken away from him, even when he was thrown out of the heavens. And that's why heaven moaned and said, woe unto the world, because the accuser of brethren has been thrown down there. So we know that he will have powers to perform signs, wonders, and miracles. And, uh, and the Bible says, even in Matthew 24, when we read further, that he will perform these signs, wonders, and miracles, and he will deceive very many, and even the elect of the Lord, if it were possible. It means it is not possible. And the ones who will be misled is the one, are the ones who choose for themselves to accept the misguided are uh, uh, things that will be done and that will be said. Uh, so may the Lord uh, uh, help us to stand for the truth. May the Lord help us not to be cowards. You see, Revelation 22 talks about out there are adulterers, idol worshippers, uh, witch, we, 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 the people who practice witchcraft and magic, uh, dogs and cowards. Those cowards, I will explain which cowards those will be. And those cowards are the cowards that will exist during the time of great tribulation. Because you know there's a number called 666 that people will have to take. And whoever doesn't take in the beginning, it just means they will not be able to transact, to travel. Uh, uh, because it shall be like a passport, it shall be like currency, it shall be your everything. And later on in the last three and a half years, that number shall uh, mean life or death. Those who do not take, they shall be killed. And so the Lord help us that we shall not uh, waver, we shall not shrink, we shall not fall at that time. So uh, Jesus Christ will return and destroy the Antichrist and his armies and cast them into the lake of fire. Revelation 19 verse 11 to 21 and Revelation 19 is very important because that's where we see the marriage supper of the Lamb which tells us there shall be some celebration in heaven while people are suffering here on earth that is for the saints who have died in Christ and those who will be found remaining and living they'll be caught up together to go and celebrate the marriage supper of the Lamb fulfilling a promise that Jesus made in Matthew 26 uh, 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 when he was serving the Lord's level, he said, I will never take off the fruit of the vine again until I take it with you uh, before the throne of my God my Father. And that is what will happen in Revelation 19. We shall look at Revelation 19 later on. And so when Christ returns, defeats the Antichrist, cast him and his armies into the lake of fire, uh, Christ will then bind Satan in the abyss, the bottomless pit, for a thousand years, and he will rule his earthly kingdom for uh, a thousand year period. 
that is seen in Revelation 20, verse 1 to 6. I don't want to go deeper into that because when we are going to uh, Revelation, I want us to look at those things. Let me give you the last thing that I would like to discuss this evening. Then next week we shall begin to look at specific things that will happen towards the end of the time. At the end of a thousand years, Satan will be released for a short while. And he will run all over the world trying to deceive many. Because the non-believers will also still be living. They have not been judged yet. And they have not been killed yet. The dead who are not in Christ will still be in their graves. The living that are not in Christ will be on earth when Christ rules for a thousand years. Hallelujah. And what, and what, and what a situation that you know you have no hope for salvation because that, is, that will not be the time for salvation. For they will be there waiting for judgment because they refused Christ Jesus. Now is the time of salvation. This is the day that you can accept Christ Jesus. That time there will be no more salvation. That time the Holy Spirit will have left the earth. That time there will be no more grace and you shall be waiting for judgment only. Hallelujah. But during the seven years, this is after the seven years, during the seven years, all those who will die because they refuse to worship the, uh, the idol of uh, the beast, those who die because they refuse to take the number 666 upon their, their, their foreheads or their right hand, uh, will directly go to heaven to join the saints there. And that's why the Bible says in uh, Revelation, and I don't want to quote because we shall read it slowly. Uh, and I saw a multitude uh, uh, that were clothed in white garments, and they were soaked in the blood. For they died during this time of the seven years, having resisted the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the devil, the, the, the unholy trinity. You see, Satan tries to copy everything God has because God has trinity, holy trinity of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Satan has unholy trinity of Satan, Antichrist, and the false prophet. And so it will be trinity versus trinity, throne uh, uh, against throne, altar against altar, uh, uh, fighting uh, in these last days and we know that God will always have an upper hand and God will always win and God will always deliver his own people uh -huh. so at the end of uh, the thousand years Satan will be released then he will be defeated again and then cast into the lake of fire let me say this clearly uh, and that is in Revelation 20 and verse 7 to 10 Satan the Antichrist and the false prophet will not go to the throne of God to be judged. They are already judged. Those ones will be just cast out. And you know, chapter 20 doesn't even talk about judgment. Judgment comes in chapter 21. And uh, then they will be defeated, then thrown into the lake of fire. The Antichrist was defeated and he was thrown into the lake of fire together with the false prof prophet. And then Satan now is released, then defeated again, and then thrown into the lake of fire. Then after that, at the great white throne judgment, uh, uh, then every man, living or dead, great or small, shall come to be judged. And then books will be opened. And when the Bible adds, and another book will be opened now. This tells us there is more than one book. So books, and we don't know how many books will be opened. And then another book shall be opened. Now, this tells me that there is a book, uh, the Lamb's Book of Life, where names are written for those who have received Jesus Christ. But it also tells me there are other books. And because every person shall be judged according to what they did, then there must be books that have what you did. We know also in Matthew 12, he says, Every man shall be judged for every idle word they uttered while they were living. So there must be another book that records every word 
that is said, good or evil, and men will be judged by those books. So there are many books. There are many books. There are many books. I don't know how many books, but one book is the most important. That other book that was opened. All right. Because it says, and it was the Lamb's book of life. And whoever whoever's name was not found in that book, they were cast into the lake of fire. You see, there is one judgment that is the ultimate of all judgment. I sent Jesus Christ to die for your sins. What did you do with Christ? You know, that is the same question that was asked by Pilate before he sentenced Jesus. That is the same question that will be repeated at the end. When Pilate was judging Jesus and he, he asked, should I give you Barnabas or Christ Jesus? And the people shouted, give us Barnabas. And then he said, then what shall we do with Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Now, at the end you shall be asked, what did you do with Christ Jesus? Uh, Jesus, who is called the Christ, uh, on that last day and your answer will determine whether you go to life or into the lake of fire Christ will then usher in a new heaven and a new earth and the new Jerusalem the eternal dwelling place of believers there will be no more sin sorrow or death Revelation 21 all the way to 22 but 21 is where the new heavens and the new earth descend from God's dwelling place. Because he says, this current world will be folded like pieces of paper. And even the old heavens will be crumbled. And then they shall be thrown into the lake of fire. Why? They've been corrupted. They were corrupted by sin. They were corrupted by deceit. They were corrupted by disobedience. They were corrupted by deceit of the devil when he deceived Eve. And so this earth by itself is evil now because of how men have dwelt here. It is It has soaked a lot of blood of innocent people and God must judge everything concerning that. And so it shall be cast into the lake of fire. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth descending from the throne place of God. Uh -huh. And this is the eternal dwelling. Now, it, it tells you clearly that we will not dwell in heaven. We shall dwell in the new earth and in the new city of Jerusalem. So that we shall be given a new Eden, a new place. We shall go back to the blueprint where God started everything in the very beginning in Genesis. Because as it were, that's what God wants it to be. But we shall have access to the throne room of God. We shall have access to the temple of heaven. We shall have access to worshiping God any time, any moment. Any, the way we, we pray here on earth, we shall pray even in the new heavens and in the new earth. And we shall be able to go to the heavens and worship God and pray with, and speak to God because there will be no more barrier. We shall not have the limitations of this physical body. We shall be able to go to heaven we shall be able to go to any part of the new world and travel and if the bible says we shall have access even to the tree of life that is guarded by the cherubims and we cannot enter that dimension to eat of that tree and live forever and that is an opportunity god is giving us now this was introduction into the end times and the events now we shall take each event plus many other things to fill in the gaps and discuss end times into a great and uh, very deep levels of understanding. Now, most times I feel like I don't need to give everything so that I can charge you and I can encourage you to desire to read more, to discover more, instead of me just getting everything and giving you everything. So I encourage you, to read especially Daniel chapter 9 and chapter 10, the book of Revelation, if you can. You can read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You can read 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, uh, the whole of it is, 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 is actually very good. You can read uh, 
second uh, Corinthians chapter 5 it, it, it is good because it talks about the judgment and the first Corinthians chapter 3 and Jude the book of Jude and then they will give you other references that you can go to and look at what God is saying uh, I, I thank you very much for joining me this evening I want us to pray and then we shall be done for the day Heavenly Father, we thank you because you're beginning to prepare us uh, uh, concerning what is coming to pass in due time that will usher in the second coming of Christ Jesus with his reward in his hand. We join the church together and the Holy Ghost to say, Come, Lord Jesus, come, Maranatha. Father, we thank you. Because you, by your Holy Spirit, will keep us strong, will keep us standing, will cause us to stand in the power of your might. And having done all, we shall remain standing, Lord. We pray that you will help us not to be led into temptation so that we fall. That we should not, mighty God our Father, be discouraged that we should fall. That we should never give up, mighty God our Father. That we shall not become cowards and fearful because of the things mentioned in the books of Revelation, Daniel, and Ezekiel. I pray that, mighty Father, Lord, you shall give us a boldness to stand. You shall give us a joy to wait in a, a total expectancy of Christ Jesus. Father, I pray that you will teach us your word, your oracles. You will also send your word by word of prophecy. You will send your angels to minister to your saints uh, because that is the work you have assigned them, almighty God. I pray that, mighty Father, we shall not fall away from faith. I pray, Father, that we shall not be discouraged. I pray, Father, that we shall not be, be enticed by the things of this world, that our minds will be focused on the things above and not things below, things that are spiritual and not the things of the flesh. Lord, I pray that we shall not be tempted by wealth and uh, prosperity. I pray that we shall not, mighty God, our Father, pursue the pleasures of the flesh and forget uh, our, our walk of the Spirit. Father, I give you praise. I give you honor. I pray that you watch over every person that has been watching this uh, 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 broadcast this evening, mighty God of Father. Now, Lord, your, your still small voice will talk to them, will encourage them, will instruct them and teach them, mighty God of Father. You will guide them by your Holy Spirit, O God, to the paths of righteousness, even for your name's sake, O God. I know your desire is that this uh, people, including myself, that we may end be, end up before you, Almighty God, that we may live with you forever and ever, O God. And that is your desire, Almighty God, our Father. I give you praise, I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you adoration, Almighty God, our Father. I commit this weekend to you, Almighty God. That, Father, you will watch over us, O God. That, Father, you will protect us, Almighty God. That, Father, you will heal us, Almighty God. Father, you will provide everything we need for life and for godliness this evening, Almighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, O God. As we embark on this training, mighty God, our Father of end times, O God, open our minds and our hearts to understand. Let our spirit catch the uh, momentum. Let us see the signs, wonders, and the telltale signs, O God. That we may know where we are standing and what we are expecting, O God, for the glory and honor of your name, Almighty God. Father, send your angels to strengthen your people. Send your Holy Ghost to fill your people and to move your people according to how you desire. Send your encouragement to your people, O God. Deliver every man, every woman, O God, for the glory and honor of your name. I pray that you protect us against every disaster, natural or unnatural, that may come to happen, Almighty God. And Father, in these times of the end times, let your people not be destroyed. Let your people not be cut short. Let your people not be pulled out of the plan that you have for them, Almighty God. Let their destinies never be curtailed, O God, our Father. And let their purposes not, never be lost, O God, for the glory and honor of your name, Almighty God. For it is in Jesus' mighty name I pray, I believe, and I trust. Amen and amen.